What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, I've got about a $13,000 comic unboxing. Some awesome books in here, a couple spec, you know, speculation books, as well as some really rare ones, some cool books I think you'll like to see. And then uh, I also did pick up a couple Pokemon cards, too, uh, because, you know, I, I really needed another thing to spend money on. So uh, stay tuned. I think you're really going to enjoy this. Alright, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So I have been busy since the start of the new year. I've, I've purchased uh, quite a few books because I've, I've been selling books. Like I say, I'm always selling books and so then I'm always just then going out and trying to buy new books. So there's a great mix in here. There's Bronze Age books, Silver Age books, Golden Age books, some rare books as well as some speculation type books. I'm going to start with this one. There's just a single book in here, but it is, uh, it, this may be, this is probably the biggest book that's in here, um, at least in terms of, you know, like a, a big key. And I've had a couple copies in the past, and this one has definitely gotten a lot more expensive uh, since the last time I've had uh, copies of this book. I had two in a 6.5 at one point, and this is back when prices hadn't really gone crazy yet. And uh, you know, I think I, I think I sold those for around three thousand. I, I think they're probably around five or six now. Um, but awesome book, just a, a huge Spider-Man book, classic. Spider-Man book, a big villain from the Silver Age. All right, this one looks, it looks really nice, especially for the grade. I am, yeah, I'm happy with this book. This looks really nice. May even, I'll show you this one, I may even wanna do like a, might be worth cracking out. So this is Amazing Spider-Man number 14. So first appearance of Green Goblin riding around on the vacuum cleaner. Uh, also have that Hulk crossover in this one. And like I said, this is another 2.5. I've, I've had a few 2.5s recently. I had that 2.5 uh, of Amazing Spider-Man 3, the first uh, Doc Ock, that was really nice looking 2.5. And this one too. And this one, check out the, uh, here you can see, see all that, that kind of like dimpling. And then on the back, similar, you've got this waviness in there. Some of that's the, the, the inner well, but definitely some waviness on this cover. And for a 2.5, it looks attached. That's always the thing you wanna be careful with uh, if you're considering cracking out a book, is really check out the staples because that's where there's a lot of risk that if you if somebody's correcting a spine roll, something like that, that they pop a staple, and then you're probably gonna go down a grade instead of up. But these staples look, they look pretty good. Uh, let's see here, there's one, there's the other. They look pretty solid, so I think this one might be a very good pressing candidate. So, very happy with that. First Green Goblin, one of the hottest characters lately because of the uh, Spider-Man No Way Home movie. Now, I tried to label some of my boxes because there's a bunch of them and I'm not, <laughs> I don't remember what's in everything. Uh, so, this one is also a, I would say this one is a little bit more of a, I'll call it still a speculation book. It has gone up a lot, but a lot of these books have, have come down a little recently. Uh, there was just some, some recent news that may have caused them to kind of spike again. So um, this is one that I would say, consider picking it up while you can. Uh, I've shown unboxings of some related books recently where, uh, because that's how I've, I've dealt with it. If I, I kind of say that if I'm, if I'm recommending something, uh, I, I mean it, <laughs> you know, it's, it's something that I'm also uh, considering or, or looking for. And I saw this one on Instagram. I thought it was a really reasonable price. Uh, this is a seller, uh, it goes by Dower. I think it's Dower DD or Dower D. Uh, and I, I, 
sorry, I can't remember exactly the, uh, the IG, uh, but uh, Dower DD, I believe, and he has some awesome books. He actually collects the uh, Mark Jewelers versions of these in that, uh, that time period. But uh, here, I have a 9 of this book right now that the funny thing is I actually bought it from him too. Uh, then he had this one up for sale, which is a 94. Looks looks really nice. Uh, this is Werewolf by Night, number 33. And so this is the second appearance of Moon Knight. You know, it's one issue later. First appearance is in issue 32. He's on the cover again. This is this black cover, so it tends to be pretty difficult to get in nice condition. And so I thought. 9.4 was a nice copy, especially since we haven't really had a real trailer yet. We've had that little teaser trailer. And now there is a risk if the show isn't received all that well, then he's not a real mainstream character. So you could definitely see prices drop in these books. And I've mentioned that before, some risk with Moon Knight. But I think they'll probably do a pretty good job with the show. So I think it's uh, worthwhile to, to look into these. It is something where you might want to consider if you're buying it to sell to sell around that trailer which is rumored to come out i think at one of the super bowl playoff games something like that so uh but yeah nine four white pages too which is just you know nice copy of this you can see it's really clean there's a little there's a little color break down in that corner there you can see right here and then maybe a couple spine ticks but really really nice presenting book as uh, this is a tough one to get in these high grades all right so this next one is a let's see let's do this one this next one has two books in it uh, they are both golden age books and one of them is <laughs> I don't get surprised by books very often anymore. I mean, I've mentioned, you know this, I, if you watch my channel, I watch those weekly heritage comic auctions every week. I mean, every week I go through every single book that they're selling. And there aren't books that I haven't seen very often anymore. <laughs> and uh, this one popped up on Instagram and I had never seen this book before. And so I reached out to the, the seller who I've, I've bought a number of books from in the past and we were able to make a, a deal on it. And there's actually a second book in here too, so I'll show both of them. But the, the big one is this uh, pre-code horror book. And it's actually uh, one of the books that's, in, that's listed in the Seduction of the Innocent. So that's when people reference SOTI or S-O-T-I it's talking about this, basically this uh, book that uh, was written that was talking about how comics were corrupting the you know childhood or children's minds and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but this is actually the other book first. This is Superman number 63. I've, mentioned, I've shown this one actually in another unboxing from the same seller. I had bought a very low grade copy from him that was the Canadian variant. The interesting with the Canadian variant is it does, the. The interesting thing with the Canadian variant is that it doesn't have the ads on the inside. So this one is much thicker than the uh, than the Canadian variant. This is the U.S. version, but this one is that one was like a 2.0 or something. This one is really, really clean. It's got this little bit of maybe like bug chew or something up in this corner here, but otherwise, I mean, you can you can tell like, this is a beautiful copy of this book. There's some color rub up here, but I mean, really, really nice copy. And this one, I think it's, I mentioned this before when I did the other unboxing that I think it's kind of a unique cover because it's like a good girl art cover with Superman and you don't really get that with Superman uh, hardly ever. So I think that's a pretty cool cover. Now, oh, this is the other one. This is a cool book. I had never seen this book before. And so when I saw this come up, I, 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 I was hoping I would be able to pick it up. You know, you never know what, what something's going to be on the price. Um, but this is Beyond number 27. And so this is one of these, you know, Seduction of the Innocent books. And just, I mean, this thing is incredible. I mean, you've got this, you know, they're hunting for this treasure. You've got this skeleton guy coming out of the water, like some curse got him or something. And now I'll say this book looks 
ridiculous on the front cover. I, I mean, it is, it, the front cover, it is a beautiful copy of this book. I, I mean, it, 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 the, unfortunately, uh, you can see it on the interior of the cover and the back cover. There is, um, it's almost like bad tanning, but it's, it's like a, it almost looks like kind of like a mix of tanning and foxing or something like that. But I mean, for this one, it's the fact that it exists because this book is very, very rare. And then just the presentation of this book is, I mean, just incredible. So Beyond 27, if you've never seen this book before, don't be surprised because I had also never seen this book before until I saw it. And uh, when I see something like that, then I, I immediately go and ask about it because I don't come across those very often. And so I was uh, very happy to be able to pick that book up. Now that one actually had an interesting story with it too. I was really scared for a bit because I got the notification that these had been delivered and it said I signed for them <laughs> and I had not signed for them. And so, um, you know, I contacted the post office and all that kind of stuff and, and uh, you know, filed a report. I, I thought they were gone forever. I, I thought because we had had some issues where people had been delivering things to the wrong houses and I was worried that that's what had happened. And then about eight hours later, it showed up on our porch. And so I don't know if some very nice neighbor that had received this package uh, then dropped it off at our house or, or what happened, but it did eventually show up. And so I was very happy and relieved about that because it's a beautiful book. It's an expensive book, but the more important thing is it is so rare. It is so uncommon to come across this book. And if, uh, if I thought it had just been lost because of a postal delivery error, I was going to be really upset. So that's one thing that's really bugged me uh, over the last couple of years, basically, or about really the last year is that the signature process seems to be kind of hit and miss. Some post offices will, will require the signature, others won't. And uh, so a lot of times you, you you don't have that security that when you require that signature, they'll just drop it off anyway and, and fake your signature. And that really, really bugs me sometimes. So I'll do, I'll, I'll cut in with a, a quick Pokemon card. So this is one where I watch the, I, I watch, if you're, if you watch Pokemon at all on YouTube, uh, the biggest guy on YouTube is Leonhart. And, um, he was unboxing cards. He was doing like he cracks packs and that kind of stuff just for fun on the channel. And he pulled this card and I was like, that is an awesome card. And so I started, I started looking it up and I decided to pick it up. It's basically, it's like Pokemon good girl art cards. <laughs> That's how I, I translate them to because I collect a lot of the good girl art uh, uh, comics from the golden age, those like pre-code type comics. And this is a full art trainer. It's actually considered probably the most provocative trainer card. This is from 2016, it's a PSA 10. Uh, this is a Skyla card. So, but uh, yeah, PSA 10, so basically perfect from the perspective of PSA, basically the equivalent of a 9.8 in, uh, in comics. But it's, you know, these full art, you know, the shiny cards, great card. So I, I was happy to pick that up. I, uh, I just, once I, when I saw it on there, I decided I would try to go after it with a graded card. All right. So next, let's go to another spec type book. So this is one that I, I think you probably still have a little time to buy this book. It has definitely gotten expensive, much more expensive than it was, but it's the type of book where similar to Spider-Man rogues gallery keys, this is a Batman rogues gallery key. At least I'm pretty sure that's what this one is. Yes, all right. So this is a Batman Rogues Gallery key, and I feel like those are the other ones where you can't really go wrong buying them. I mean, you can always pay too much for something, but as long as you're within kind of the realm of fair market value, I feel like you can't really go too wrong picking up books like that. And so I have one other copy that's a little nicer than this one. It's probably like a four, three, five, four. This one is definitely more beat up, but still, this has become a pretty expensive book in all grades, and I was happy to pick it up. And this is Batman number 171. So this is the first Silver Age appearance of the Riddler. He has his first appearance back in the Golden Age. That book costs a fortune. There was a Promise Collection copy that sold for, I don't know, what was it? 
was a lot. <laughs> like 368,000 or something like that, or 456,000, some, somewhere in that range. Um, this one is a lot cheaper. And uh, it's this pink cover, which I think is really cool for the Silver Age. I like these more unique type colored covers. And you can tell, I mean, it's it's beat up. It is, it is not a high grade copy by any stretch. I think like a two, something like that. Uh, but still, relatively complete picture. It has this little piece out of the corner down, or up here, and a little piece down here. Not too bad. Um, so happy to, to always, you know, pick up books like this. I, I like buying those types of keys. I like Batman. Uh, I think Batman and Spider-Man, I mean, they're the, they're, they're the, the top tier characters for their, for DC and Marvel. And so going after keys for those respective characters, I think are, are very worthwhile if you're looking for whether it's investments or whatever, but for me, it's also Batman is probably my favorite books to collect. And when I was a kid, Spider-Man was my favorite, so I also really like to pick those up. All right, so I've got two graded boxes left. Let's do this one. This one was a, uh, I think it's kind of a funny story with this book because I bought this on an Instagram claim sale. And when I saw it, I was like, I recognize that book. <laughs> and uh, the reason was that I had bid on it probably five months ago. And I did not win that auction. I am sure uh, the person I bought it from uh, is the person who won that auction. I ended up buying it from them. That, that's the second time that's happened where someone has bought a book and, uh, and that I was also bidding on. And then I ended up buying it from that person later. Uh, and so this, let's see, I know there's something extra in here that you put in here, so I want to make sure I don't lose that. Yeah, so I ended up uh, picking this up from, it's a seller that goes by Polanski CC on Instagram. And if you haven't watched his Instagram claim sales before, I highly recommend it. His books are incredible. They're just, uh, they are they're some of the the rarest books, just super high grade. I mean, just some really, really incredible, uh, incredible books. So I would definitely recommend checking uh, those out, especially if you're interested in anything golden age uh, and rare and high end books, because that is what he sells. Um, but this one, I had seen this book the first time. I had never seen this book before until the Promise Collection came out. And then when the Promise Collection came out, I saw this one as one of the books that was being sold in the first round of the Promise Collection. And I was like, that is an incredible cover. And uh, so I, uh, then this one came up later as a you know, non-Promise book. And I was bidding on it, didn't win it. And then it came up in this live sale and I decided to pick it up gave me what I felt was a, a great price, so super happy with that, so thank you for that. And also, uh, he gave an extra with it uh, that I'll, I'll talk about right after this. And so, this is Punch Comics number 19. And, I mean, look at this cover. Like, this is crazy. This is a crazy cover, just like, uh, it, this, is, this is the definition of like pre-code horror type violent covers. I mean, you've got bodies everywhere, blood everywhere, these giant hands, uh, it's, like a good girl art type cover. It's cool, it's got this like written date, you know, on the cover, which is really nice. It is slightly brittle pages, but I've mentioned this a number of times, I do not care about page quality. You can see it's still, it is an incredible looking book. That, and that's a misconception that I think is out there a lot of times with, with brittle or slightly brittle books is that people think it means that the pages are all crumbling and falling apart. And they will designate something as brittle or slightly brittle if it just has like a tiny bit of brittleness on, on the pages. And so you could have some books that are, I mean, like this. Like this is an incredible copy of this book. I mean, just, I mean, it is a beautiful looking copy. I mean, look at this, there's like, it's like find the flaws, <laughs> you know? And, and so this is where page quality can start to, to ding your, uh, your book. I mean, that, that top staple might be a little rusty, but I mean, otherwise, this is beautiful. I mean, this is 1946. And look at this back cover, super white back cover, really, really clean. I mean, this this is an awesome book. This is a book that, that definitely, uh, 
falls into my, my keepers type list. There are a number of really just great issues from the Punch Comics run. Uh, I think, you know, 12 is the most popular, the biggest one. 19 is probably my second favorite. Uh, I really like 19. Now the fun thing that he was doing as part of this sale was that uh, if you bought a book, he then had Megalodon teeth on like a little wheel and he would roll dice and whatever number you got was the tooth that you got. And so uh, he I got this, never had a Megalodon tooth before. You yeah, know, so this is the, the tooth that I got for free just for buying that book, which I thought was, I thought that was a really fun extra that he was throwing in. He had a, he had one on there that was a, it was a two. So if you, you know, he basically put it in the hard, the hard spot that the two was a, a big tooth. It was like that. Nobody ended up winning that one. Um, but still really, I mean, thought this was really cool extra to uh, throw in with that book. All right. All right. We'll do one more Pokemon card and then the last book, which again is a couple awesome books. Now this one is another full art trainer. I think I saw this one on <laughs> Leon Hart's channel as well uh, and decided to pick this one up. Um, so like I said, I, I feel like it kind of like it fits with some of the books I collect. It's kind of like good girl art Pokemon cards. And so I think that's kind of a fun little crossover. And uh, this one is also a PSA 10 because these are a little more modern. That's what I, you know, so I try to, to go for it. Generally, it's going to be the most in demand type card. Card collectors are definitely different than comic collectors. Comic collectors seem pretty easy to accept a variety of grades, but with card collectors, the, uh, the, the PSA 10 is really, it's so far and above the, the other ones that, um, that it's always worth picking those up. All right, so this is 2018 Full Art Lycia Celestial Storm PSA 10. So this is another, you know, shiny, basically kind of like good girl art type full art card. And so these were the, the two that I picked up. So, yeah, so those are the just a couple Pokemon cards. I have not bought a Pokemon card since I bought uh, the ones earlier this year when prices were, were really, really high. And so card prices have come down significantly and I, I felt comfortable kind of like buying some again and feeling like I probably wasn't gonna get like super burned by price drops. So last book here, or, or last box here, there are two books in here. Uh, one of them is one that I think is a, a pretty solid spec book. You know, it's a big key, but I think it is a, a solid spec book. And the other one is just a, I think an awesome golden age book. So double box. There we go. So one of them is graded. One of them is raw. So we'll do the, that looks awesome. <laughs> so we'll do the raw book first. There's a lot of packaging material <laughs> on the floor. All right. It's always the, never the fun part of these is the cleanup afterwards. All right. So this is, this is a nice looking book. All right. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, that is a nice looking book. All right, so this is the one that I consider as, I mean, it's an expensive book, but I consider this kind of a speculation type book. So this is Amazing Spider-Man number 20. And the reason I think this is a speculation book is I think that this is one of those books where you're gonna have this character eventually pulled in more in the future with Spider-Man, with those Spider-Man movies. Uh, so I think that this is one where there's a good opportunity or, or there's a good chance that we'll see more of this character uh, actually in costume and, and all that kind of thing. Uh, and I, I also really like this one because it has this uh, this 10 pence stamp. And so these are uh, basically when it was overseas, you got these stamps on it for the, the purchase price. But the nice thing is that you have the US price because the pence copy books tend to be less desirable than the, the cent copy books. Uh, they, they don't sell for quite as much, they're harder to sell, 
but this one, you get the scent copy book, but then you also get that, that cool stamp, which means that this thing was overseas at one point, which I always think is really cool. Uh, then it also has, which I'm guessing is like a store stamp. Uh, where is it? Here? Yeah. Uh, this store stamp um, it says Coleman's Books. You know, Coleman's Books there. And there, there are some things on here that are, I think, worthwhile for pressing. We've got, uh, let's see here. Let's see. It's not a subscription crease. It's not like a full length crease or anything, but it's like a little, little bend there. And uh, I just, I felt like this was a, pretty nice presenting copy of this book. I think like 555 was about where the, the grade was estimated and it seems pretty reasonable. So happy with this one. This is the nicest copy of this book I've ever had. I had a pretty low, I think like a 2.5 or something like that at one point. But I think that is a book that, again, you can't really go wrong as long as the price is within reason of a fair market value picking up early Silver Age Spider-Man keys, just like with Batman. And then I think this one has a solid potential in the future uh, for, for prices to go up. Now the last one here is a graded book. And this one, uh, it, yeah, it just, it's a cool cover. And so this is Golden Age, this is a Timely. This is Golden Age, Captain America, Human Torch, and Bucky. This is all select comics. Number nine, and so you've got Human Torch, the, the uh, who is the large person here. Then you've got Toro, who is the small version of Human Torch, basically here. Then we've got Captain America. We've got Bucky. Uh, then this is a Alex Schomburg cover. You can see up there. So that's, you know, when you're talking about Golden Age, Captain America, Human Torch, Alex Schomburg is the way to go. Yeah, I mean, he's the one. He is the artist that most people want to collect. Uh, the the covers for is the I mean he's the premier golden age Marvel artist and now this one this is not a uh, like a World War II type cover even though it, it's fall of 1945 right near the end of World War II but it's so I think it's like a it's a cool early sci-fi cover you've got these aliens you've got spaceships I don't know if they're on the moon or or what's going on there but fun cover 60 which is a really nice grade for that time period. Uh, my other Alex Schomburg one is this guy right here. Uh, so Marvel Comics number seven, you can see, you know, he, he draws Human Torch. This is, this is the second time that he drew Human Torch on the cover. And so this is when, in my opinion, his first time, uh, it doesn't really look like the Human Torch that you know. This is the first time it really looks like Human Torch. You can see how similar it is here. And I was very happy with uh, this book because there was a monster sale on Heritage this weekend for a 6.5. So very happy with, with that book. But uh, this one, you know, a 6.0, again, in the 40s, especially World War II era, it is tough to get nice condition books uh, like this. And so very happy with this book. And uh, so, yeah, timely. You know, or, which is effectively before it became Marvel, I am always really happy to be able to pick up a book like that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Just, I feel like a lot of really cool books, uh, some ones that I would call kind of like speculation, some rare golden age books, some big keys. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. I'd like to see more videos like this. I do unboxings pretty regularly. I, I buy a lot of books and I just, I like to, to show off the cool books to kind of, you know, let people see books maybe that they've never seen before, you know, something like, like Punch Comics, because that's how I was able to get interested in a lot of these was it was following things like Instagram channels and seeing these books that people had. And I was like, oh, those are so cool. And then you start searching them out. And so I think this is just another way to get people interested in books that you may not even know are out there. So. Again, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I've got more videos over here. If you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right here, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.